Hi, everyone. It's Joey Remini from seekingbalance.com.au. The okay, next question I've had submitted is, feels like it's taking me a little bit out of my comfort zone. It's about parenting and grandparenting and how do we support our children, grandchildren or students to live in the rock steady way of life too is the question. So in essence, what is the rock steady way of life? Like what is it that we're trying or wanting or eager to share with our loved ones? And for me, I think it's really about being present with reality, being able to actually experience and feel through reality, even when it's uncomfortable. So to be willing to meet reality and move through it with compassion, kindness, presence, and some really useful practical tools. So as we're parenting, whether it's our own children, grandchildren, or students, I really feel the number one thing we can do is role model how we're experiencing the world, help people to understand perhaps our thought patterns. Um, maybe we could vocalize, use words, put words to our emotional experience, and then also role model holding ourselves, breathing through it, allowing it to pass through us, and sort of commentating or sharing with the children or the students how we might be feeling tense and a heartbeat and clammy, but I'm just going to give myself a breath. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to hold myself. And I'm already starting to feel that my body is softening. My body is quieting. I'm feeling support and comfort through my own hands, through my own self-connection and allowing the children to notice that when I go into fight, flight, freeze, which again, we can put words to that and say, wow, I'm starting to feel really agitated. I'm starting to feel really frightened. I'm feeling very vulnerable. I need to take a moment to care for myself. I need support. I need assurance. Really actually just role modeling that process and that dialogue and showing them what it looks like. <clears throat> Sometimes just talking about it actually helps us to feel relief and to feel um, that we decatastrophize and de-escalate. But then, you know, having our self-compassion hands, having our body scanning, or the capacity to advocate and say, right now, I need to take care of myself. I need a two-minute break. I'm just going to go and give myself some quiet time and solitude so I can collect myself. That is really role modeling self-advocacy. And I think this can start at any age. And children are very, very attuned. I've got a not yet four-year-old, so a three-year-old and a two-year-old. And we do all of this together. We do breathing. We do giving ourselves cuddles. And they copy me. So if I'm doing it, they'll if I'm cuddling myself, they'll copy me and they'll cuddle themselves. If I take a deep breath or just consciously move my awareness into my breathing, they'll copy me. Or if they're not interested, they'll just run off and quietly play. And they'll, they'll sense and feel that whatever I'm doing is important because I'm giving myself so much grounded presence that neurologically sends that signal that I'm that I'm fully in my body and everything's okay and that has a co-regulation effect on the kids so they'll just be like okay well mum's doing something and she's okay I'll just run off and read my book or play my lego so I think the role modeling the talking it through just noticing what rock steady skills and tools are useful for you and not being afraid to be more extroverted with how you implement them or just talk about how it's benefiting you. So I think that sort of sense of personal narrative and storytelling, you might find it actually helps you, that it helps you clarify what am I doing, what is useful for me. And there's also that beautiful social validation. There's a real innocence and sincerity that children will listen. And so it can feel really nice to share that part of your inner world and your process and to feel listened to. And possibly even to feel useful if they then maybe begin to experiment themselves. So what not to do would be to force them to do anything. I wouldn't expect them to body scan or place their hands on their body. Don't expect any sense of behavioural change in the children or the students or the grandkids. Simply just keep role modelling and keep offering options and opportunities for them to copy because after seeing it enough times, you might notice that they'll be out and about they hurt themselves, they fall over or they're fighting over a toy and they stop and they hop, they cuddle themselves and they actually start implementing it out of their own initiative. And that's what we're noticing with our kids. 
our three-year-old will say, I've got a really tired brain. I'm going to go to bed and he'll put himself to bed. Um, or when he's feeling like he wants his own space, he'll actually say, I need space. And he'll teach the world how to treat him based on what he's feeling. And we haven't taught him to specifically do that, but we've role modeled that. And at times when he has pushed people away and said he needs space, we say, rather than say, don't push, although there's been plenty of that as well, but rather than focus on the pushing behavior, we actually say, that's really great. You can advocate for yourself and that you know you need space and you can use your words to ask for space. You don't need to push people away. You can also say, I need space and I want time to myself right now. I don't want to share my toys. So really validating the self-advocacy that he knows his body, he knows what he's feeling, he knows what he needs, and we're deeply listening to that and celebrating that process that he's in as a three-year-old. Um, and our little two-year-old, and even when he was one, he would copy us and their arms are so little they can't actually cuddle themselves, but he'd sort of go like this and do his best to um, just be a part of it because it's like a game for children. And and that would probably be my other piece of um, the story. I don't want to call it advice, but is whenever you are with children, grandchildren or students, keep it as curious and playful and fun and light as possible. So not lots of lecturing, not lots of talking, but lots of in the moment, you know, sharing what's real and authentic and, um, yeah, keeping things playful and light. And so if my kids do, you know, push me or kick me in a way that they're just testing the waters and it is playful, it's not uh, malicious, I might just say, oh, I need a cuddle. I need to stop and take care of myself. I can't play right now. And I I sort of assert the boundary in a playful way and I give myself all the self-care so that they're associating the, the rough behavior with someone then needing time to recuperate. And now that my uh, three-year-old's getting closer to four, we're talking a lot about, you know, checking in on people. So if I do accidentally knock them over or if I snatch a toy, um, or, you know, just any sort of rough behavior, which does happen at this age, teaching him to pause and check in and to say, are you okay? How are you feeling? Um, you know, I'm, I'm sorry I did that to you. So like just te- getting them to engage in some of those social interactions and those skills um, in whatever capacity, but deeply trying to not shame the behavior because the pushing and the kicking and the shoving and the snatching, it's all actually part of, um, little people moving through big emotions and big experiences and not necessarily knowing what to do with that big energy. So there's like a, you know, some rough behavior. So really trying to not be shameful, which is hard. It's really challenging as a parent. Um, and we have to be really compassionate to ourselves when we do yell or snatch back or, um, you know, be too blunt or too abrasive. And we can just tell that emotionally it hasn't, there's been more friction to pause, to step back and to repair and to say, I'm really sorry that I was, I snapped at you then. I'm sorry if I raised my voice or how did that make you feel? And really coming back into that place of, I care about you. I respect you. I actually became dysregulated. I didn't respond very well. I need to really take care of myself and pause. I need to slow down and do a quick body scan. Um, And now that I feel more centered and I've had time to reflect on it, I want to check in with you. And so really role modeling all of that repair behavior because becoming dysregulated, having an outburst, you know, being the imperfect human being we all are, it's part of life. So it's all about building resilience, role modeling repair, and role modeling the self-reassurance, self-support, self-compassion Uh, from very young ages so that's what I have to say on that topic and I hope it's useful so it's to learn more about me visit seekingbalance.com.au bye for now